Welcome to this edition of the Saving Civilization podcast. Conspiracy theories have been receiving a lot of attention in the news lately. You may have heard some of these, such as those about 9-11 or vaccines. Today we will talk about characteristics of conspiracies, describe who believes in them, and examine various scholarly views about why people believe in them. A conspiracy theory is defined as a theory that explains an event or set of circumstances that occur as the result of a secret plot by an unusually set of powerful conspirators. It is also considered as a theory asserting that a secret of great importance is being kept from the public. For example, the Pizzagate conspiracy theory went viral during the 2016 presidential election in the United States and posits that satanic cannibalistic members of the Democratic Party were operating a child sex trafficking ring in the basement of a pizza shop in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Hard to believe, but many, many people do believe this. Most successful conspiracies show two common elements. The first is the presence of a mysterious cabal pulling the strings behind the scenes, controlling and manipulating world events. The second is a more obvious visible target group connected to the cabal. For instance, the Pizzagate conspiracy has the Democratic Party as the controllers and the innocent young children as the victims. Another characteristic is that conspiracies involve the idea of the wool being pulled over our eyes, that we are being actively deceived. This leads to a skepticism towards authorities like pharmaceutical companies or Washington insiders who are lying to cover up their actions. The power and reach ascribed to these conspirators is enormous. There is apparently nothing that they can't orchestrate. Often these groups control the government, the economy, the media, and even the scientific community. They can do things such as rig elections, start wars, poison our water, and so on. Conspiracies serve several purposes. They provide an enemy, describe a world that is beyond their control, and create an us versus them mentality, which solidifies within group solidarity. Conspiracy theories often also draw on existing prejudices, like anti-Semitism. They provide scapegoats for problems, and they urge that immediate action is necessary before things get even worse. Who believes in conspiracy theories? Well, the scary thing is that it isn't just a small number of people who believe in them. Their belief is, in fact, quite widespread and crosses just about every demographic divide, including gender, race, income, age, political affiliation, educational attainment, and occupation. These facts are actually quite disheartening because it suggests that this susceptibility is perhaps part of human nature. Men and women believe in conspiracies with about equal likelihood. Although, slightly more people with less than a high school education believe in them compared to college graduates, there are examples of highly intelligent individuals who have succumbed to them, including professors, presidents, and even Nobel Prize winners. They also seem to appeal to people across all age groups. In a 2019 poll, about one quarter of the sample said they believe the U.S. government is hiding aliens at Area 51, that 9-11 was an inside job, and that climate change is a hoax. Such data might make it seem like more people believe, believe in conspiracy theories now than ever before in history, but in fact that is not true. One study looking at letters to the editor over an approximate 100-year period 
found that the percentage with conspiracies mentioned in them has remained remarkably constant. Conspiracy theories form the core of the beliefs for many extremist groups. Bartlett Miller in 2010 examined the literature of over 50 such extremist groups spanning the entire ideological spectrum. They found that a significant number of them did in fact believe in such theories. Brotherton in 2015 outlines the type of person who may be susceptible to believing in conspiracies. They are open to unproven allegations. They shun conventional wisdom. Suspect that things happen for a reason and not by accident. Enter into large scale narratives of good versus evil. They also like to see connections between disparate events and are capable of sustaining their belief in the presence of counter arguments. Conspiracy belief also correlates with certain personality traits. It is suggested that conspiracists have a paranoid personality style. This is a distorted way of viewing the world, characterized by delusional thinking, excessive suspicion, exaggeration of facts, and a high level of imagination. It is also related to the level of trust in others. One study found that the less trusting a person is, the more likely they are to believe in conspiracies. Conspiracy thinkers tend to be more hostile, cynical, defiant of authority, disagreeable, and anxious. Paranoia is strongly associated with mistrust of unfamiliar faces, while conspiracy is associated with mistrust of political institutions. So why do people believe in such crazy outlandish stories? Well, according to one theory, it is to maintain an internal sense of order and consistency. Most people don't like ambiguity, and such theories help to explain the world in a way that is consistent with our pre-existing beliefs. They, in effect, help to connect the dots between what may seem like random events to give an explanation to the world. Conspiracies also address a feeling of powerlessness. If we feel like our own lives are out of control, then it may be easier to blame somebody else for it. Who better to blame than those who are in power? In this view, a worker, for example, recently fired, might be biased to believe in corporate conspiracies. This same person might then be inclined to believe in immigration conspiracies if he thought his layoff was due to competition from immigrant workers. Another explanation for why people believe in conspiracies is simplicity. The world is a complicated place, and conspiracies provide a highly simplified explanation of events. In this sense, conspiracies may appeal to people who have a low tolerance for complexity. Interestingly, this fits the authoritarian personality type who score low on the big five trait of openness. Another reason people believe in conspiracies is because it makes them feel good and allows them to vent their anger and frustration. It is also an act of rebellion against the establishment, and many of these individuals feel like they have been let down by the quote-unquote system. Being rebellious is empowering, especially for people who may lack economic or political clout. It also allows these people to participate in a shared community online, which is psychologically self-affirming. This last point shows that these people don't really want to be right. They just want someone to agree with them. Rosenblum and Moorhead in 2020 
outline three psychological reasons why people believe in conspiracies. The first is that we look for intentionality in events. So if classified documents are found in a president's home, it then seems more plausible that they were taken there intentionally rather than by accident. Second, important events seem to require important causes, what is called proportionality. It seems more true than that 9-11 was caused by the US government rather than by a small number of terrorists. The third principle is confirmation bias, where we tend to believe things that accord with what we already believe. If we are already suspicious of the government, then it would make sense that the government is involved. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to catch our second video on conspiracy theories, where we talk about science deniers and how difficult it is to change their minds.